Tegenjao. Mr. Governor, Governor. Yes. Uh, Busia is one of those counties you hardly hear about. I mean, uh, it's, it's not the newspapers, it's a, what, it's kind of a, a, a like a backhand place. Is that so? Is that, is it, is it, um, there are no controversies, there are no, there's not much known about Busia. Why is that so? Yeah, it's a, a quiet place, but it's also a very busy place. I think it's just because might be the people from Busia are not reckless noise makers. They are very objective people. That's why it's not being heard. Normally, the what, uh, what appears in many counties is that there are either differences between the governor and the deputy, the governor and the senate, the governor and the MCAs. Why is your Busia, you don't hear those kind of things? What's the formula? In fact, when we came into before the elections, Busia had been noted as one of the ghost counties that's going to have chaos mm -hmm. by the previous committees as we post election because of its the diversity it has. So Busia, mostly everybody, both in town and even in the villages. Find we have the Gikuyus, the Somalis, the Luos, the Luyas, the Tesos, all of them there, but very varying interests. But fortunately, I think it's because of the leadership there that the constant consultation the people have. We have the elders of the Busia Elders Council, the religious forums, religious leaders, the politicians themselves. We keep on engaging when they were to forestall uh, any fallouts. So we've been very careful to considering our past, because previously we had a very uh, terrible kind of life in there, because people are, used to pull aside. So, but this time we have learned our lesson, we say that we should move forward. Is that a conspiracy to eat? It's not a conspiracy to eat, <laughs> but to develop our county. So, <laughs> so we, have, we also had our objectives clear cut. Our selected leaders, like the MCS, members of parliament and the governor and the senator we've said were elected to serve the people and not to quarrel it's not a question of quarrel it's about mcs are, are supposed for instance to check you to check your government are, yeah, they, they, are they doing their job or you, you know in some co co counties they're just uh, they do buy them we don't buy them actually i think fortunately for busia county we the people elected very mature mcs and they are constantly on their jobs and they are on top of things. If you look at the public accounts or, or oversight committees, they are constantly on their job overseeing the executive. In fact, my executive so much besieged. Wherever they go wrong, the, the, the committees are on them because we are just a few kilometers apart, just a kilometer apart. So they are constantly being checked. To me, it's not that they, they, they have been bought because they are very mature people and they, are, they understand what they are doing exactly. And also, I put in a very strong executive committee, the chief officers. And we recruited them very competitively, not on any other considerations, and they know their job. Okay. It, it looks like it's a, good, uh, it's a good county. Would you therefore tell us what uh, achievements you've done because of this piece? What, uh, what is it you have done that, we'll know that, that makes the difference? that makes the evolution felt by the people of Busia? Yeah, for the first one year, we were not felt, and there were so many challenges. One of these that, that there was a lot of propaganda from the national government. They were not remaining, remitting the resources, but they made people believe all the billions, so like the 4.7 billion for Busia County had been remitted. So it might be the executive, the governor, and this technical staff were, were doing zero. Whereas the reality was that they were not remitting any funds. Some of us started getting funds six months, nine months thereafter. So that challenge, we have overcome it. Now we have the little resources coming. But for the little resources we have, we've so far done a lot, a few months. One is that in the road sector, the road was terrible. There were no passable roads in the whole of Buzia County. In fact, for 10 months, it was a nightmare for people. So, so far what we say that as an executive, we bought our own equipment, new equipment, graders, the tippers for carrying maram, the rollers, because we saw the need to 
to fix this problem. And so far, we have fixed almost 80% of the roads. So they are all passable. Even those which are supposed to be done by the national government, we have come in handy, despite them having more resources than us. We've come in handy, the people of Busia County, and now the roads are generally passable. So the complaints have come down from where people were making demonstration and planting bananas on roads. Now they can smile. That's one achievement we have done, and we intend to do even more. The second achievement is in the medical sector, even though we have not moved very far, because it's a sector that needs a lot of resources, a lot of money. In fact, the whole of Buzia County budget is insufficient for the health sector alone. But people do not know. People want you to make perform miracles with very little money. So, so far, we've, we are upgrading our sub-county hospitals, all of them with wards and wards and laboratories. Two, we have purchased uh, ambulance equipment for all our sub-county hospitals. How many ambulances? We have seven for every sub-county. But it's not specifically for any sub-county, but they are just stationed sub-counties. But whenever there's, there's an opportunity, there's a, a, a command center manned by the St. John Ambulance, where it can, they can all be moved to one particular place whenever they are needed. Then we are also building a medical training center, so to, to which it's completion now. We expected the first intake this, 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 the last month, but we intend to have an intake very soon. So there's an MTC we, we envisage a situation where we shall be producing students, nurses, and the medical staff who will assist us in our institutions. Then we are also finalizing the recruitment of nurses and uh, doctors uh, and the other health. Did you have problems paying them? Are we have other counties? No, our budget is, uh, uh, budget is well balanced. If, if our funds are brought, in fact, we can do 60%. There was a lateness in bringing up the, the budget for the Minister of for the Health Workers uh, this month to the extent that some counties they are, they are demonstrating. How did you sort your problem? You know, we have various problems in the counties. There are some counties which cannot even pay their workers. But as for Busia, I know we can do 60% of budget development and 40% recurrent. And we are very comfortable. If you look at the county like Yambu, we have 18 counties which cannot even manage uh, doing the recurrent, let alone the development vote. So these are the fact, some of the things that, but Busia County is among those counties which have more money that can be put into development than the recurrent expenditure. How is your revenue collection? You have mentioned that the government, the national government contribution is, was small in the <coughs> beginning or was not forthcoming. How about local revenue collection? The revenue collections we anticipated to pick, collect one billion yes. from uh, local budget. local resources, yeah. but we have challenges in that we have we are not yet automated revenue collection. The same guys we inherited from the local councils, are the same guys who are still doing the job. We in, still have the same systems, but we we intend to automate so that we can maximize what the revenue uh, revenue collection. So unless yeah. we perfect those systems. In some counties, mm. revenue collection during the local authorities' times was more than they are collecting now. What is the situation in Busia? The situation we have improved slightly. That's what I'm telling you. You know the kind of stuff we inherited. You know we are going now professional. And you know those people in the counties those days, you just pick your relatives. If as long as you know how to scribble or sit. And say, because it's already printed, you are, somebody is supposed to pay 10 bob for fucking. So it's just plucking and giving you. It didn't, it didn't need no education. You just have to have some a few muscles. <laughs> so, but now we are trying to go digital. And those people to see they are now being challenged. They might be faced out. So you'll find that they will sabotage most of the some of these things. That's why we are having problems. But soon, once we train the new kind of staff and have the right equipment, you'll find that the revenues will go up in, throughout the country. It's just a matter of time. OK, what now you've talked about um your success or your place to work with. What about your, your challenges? Yeah, the challenges, those are not the only successes anyway. We have made so many other successes in other fields. In, an, in a natural, in a, tell us, in an, in and the, tell us challenges. The challenges, one is that the, the kind of stuff we inherited is a bloated stuff, but with no technical skills. You can imagine of a staff, if you have 500 staff, and only might be 50 of the technical skills to deliver. The rest are just joyriders. 
and you know because of the political situations you cannot lay them off because these are people from within the county so these are things that they have discussed even at the summit but we have not come out with a uh, clear because i would rather have nurses and doctors in hospitals rather than having might be so many people pretending to be sweeping the streets but they are not doing so but earning very high salaries just to inform you that some of these county <coughs> staff, you know, they earn more salaries than even the professional staff. Find somebody with a degree is earning the same salary as the enforcement officer who has a CPE certificate. So you'll find that you'll, it's a big problem, so the challenge of staff. Two is another challenge is the irregular flow of resources to the, the county. The one challenge I faced in the, I faced in the first year, over 600 million of mine was misdirected to Bungoma County. How did that happen? Uh, our population for Bzia, almost the population from Bzia, the Teso, the, the whole Teso population had been tried, had been earmarked for, uh, irregularly earmarked, taken to Bungoma County. And the resources followed the population there. So it has been a problem, right? whereas the people are physically in Bzia County. So it has been a problem getting that back the money. Uh, my Senate has tried, the MPs are trying, but because of the government systems, there are no, pro there are no provisions to return this money. And you know, 600 million can change Busia in overnight. So those are some of the challenges. Two is a challenge of uh, poverty. There's a lot of poverty in the county, but we intend to bring in investors who can exploit the resources. We have the resources, but they cannot be exploited for, for, the, for the benefit of the people. So that's why we are organizing an investor conference so that people can come we'll, and... We'll talk about that soon, but mm. tell me why is there poverty in Busia? Because uh, it's, a, it's a well endowed county. Extremely. In, 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 in Kundu agriculture, uh, we are in the border, which means a lot of business, you can build through the cross-border business. Why would the people in Busia be poor? I think because of people are still trying to graduate from the traditional life to the modern kind of life. You know, previously, Busia was a land of plenty. Yeah, it's it a be. land of plenty. We had a lot of livestock. So it was a matter of just, you just sit, as your cows reproduce, you take care of them. You could, it was easy life. Crops could just grow without fertilizer and all those things. But now the world is changing and people are not changing. Like, you, people should now change into mechanization, not plowing using jembes. You know, it's taking time for us to transit to that place. People, people now uh, are engaging in modern <coughs> livestock farming. We still want to keep our small cows. So we are not moving in the same pace as the wild is. It's changing. People are engaging in bus uh, modern business practices. <coughs> we still believe in just having very little capital in our uh, stock, in our shops and all those things. So we actually want to transform people people should now graduate. Otherwise, we have resources that we can exploit for the good of our, the, the county. And we are now trying to motivate people to work even further. So tell me about the, the investment conference that you have. What is the intention? What do you want to achieve? Yeah. What we are just saying in the wild as Busia exists, it is in Western Kenya, it's a gateway to Eastern <coughs> Central Africa. It has been a transit point from Kenya to those areas, Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda, South Sudan, other countries. It has just been a transit point. But we are saying that we can transform this border point from a transit to an economic hub. There are so many opportunities. We can put up so, uh, business opportunities that can transform the economy of Busia County. So we, can, we say that we can have, <coughs> just the way we have the port of Mombasa, we can have a dry port in uh, Busia County because it's the only e exit from Kenya to Eastern Central Africa. And you find that the Rwandese, people from Rwanda, Sudan, go up to Mombasa. Where should they be going there if we can transform Busia into a dry port? Where we can move the goods to, clear the goods in, in Mombasa, and then clear them from Busia County. So it can create opportunities for higher wire housing and the clearing agents and all those things. Offices will be set up there. Then definitely there will be job opportunities in the place. The people who will be coming there will be residing there and you'll find that their presence there will, will mean a lot for the people of Busia County. We say that also, the, uh, it is opportunity for industrialization. The industry, people come and pick, uh, 
plastic things from Nairobi here, uh, or other goods from Nairobi, Mombasa. Why can't people come and put up those things at the, along the border of, of Kenya and the Uganda? So that the Rwandese and the Sudanese can should not come into Mombasa the whole way here. So we say a, there are opportunities at uh, Nibusia County in all sectors, be it in agriculture. It's an agricultural county. Why should people be coming for fertilizers all this place here? People should invest and in agricultural inputs in Ibusia County and the, and the, the area can grow. So we have uh, various areas, uh, areas <coughs> where people can exploit. I don't and know whether you want to invest, invent the wheel because you are not telling me about local resources that can bring industry. Because if you say plastic, plastic can be done anywhere. Yes. What about local staff using local environment to industrialize? Yes, that's what I'm telling you. Like now, uh, we managed to invite, we are partnering the Busia County government with a Korean farm, or mm. Korean investors, to put up a, a fertilizer factory. And you know, most of our yields from agricultural farms has been very low. You'll find that if the fertilizer factory is there, it's an organic fertilizer factory, you'll find our farmers will be able to make greater yields, isn't it? Uh, what and, and what local material will be used to do a fertilizer factory in Busia? The molasses and the water that is there. So it's a, it's a technology I can't tell you now, but <laughs> it's a very, you'll visit there and you'll find that it's very interesting. So we are having, having a plant of its kind in Africa, now in, in Busia County. So in fact, if our yields go high, we shall be, have, be able to have cottage industries in the uh, farm produce. Like now, we are almost putting, we are in the process of putting up a cassava factory to exploit the cassava there. We have the tobacco, uh, tobacco in Busia. You know, it's a great, uh, an, an area that grows tobacco. We don't want our tobacco to be brought to thick. We want it just to be, to be, man, to, to be manufactured. Add value. Uh, add value, add value yeah, from yeah. there. We have a lot of maize. We have a lot of wimby, in, uh, groundnuts, simsim, and everything that grows in Busia County. We want it at least added value for, from Busia, uh, the Busia County itself. And many other things. We had other resources, like the fish. We have a lot of fish in Lake Victoria. But you find that it's brought to Nairobi, the industrial area for processing. Why can't uh, an investor come here and put up a plant so that the, our fish is processed from there? Then it's brought here with a finished product. So uh, those are some of the opportunities we want to exploit. Like the tourism sector. We have very good beaches. The fresh, like a uh, fresh, what a leg. We want people to come and put their three star hotels just the way it's happening on the other side of Uganda. You, you come and enjoy the tourism sector there. So we say that we have so many opportunities that we can exploit there, like in the educational sector. We have to come the whole way from there to Nairobi to buy education materials. Why can't we have somebody who can produce education materials there? Do you have a university in Busia? We do not have a university so far. And, yeah, uh, and, uh, and you know, Busia is uh, one of those areas which produces academicians in Kenya. Yeah, there are a lot of We are also attracting people, people if you can put up universities there to Why come. Why is it so that we don't have private or public universities in Busia? That is something we got. But now we are waking up to reality now that we have them now. And we are attracting most of them. And uh, Masidi Budur University has showed interest. Jaramogi University has showed interest. Uh, more universities have showed interest, uh, Nairobi University has showed interest, and we are giving, like more universities, we have given them over 100 acres of land for free. For free, and we, 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 we intend to move in in time. They have we have been giving them a title. Do you have any private people who want to set up universities in Busia? Not so far, uh, not so far, but. Very, very interesting because Busia has a lot of educated people. Very many educated and very intelligent people, in your case. So we, we are trying to explore these opportunities. That's why we are calling this investment conference. So tell me about the investment conference. How is it organized and how, how do you know whether it will be successful, successful or not? Yes, so far we have been in the preparations. <coughs> I think it was an idea that we initiated in our executive. We say that the resources we get are little. So we cannot, and even, those, even if we partner with the national government, we shall not be able to move far. Whom do you expect in that uh, conference? Actually, we have people with various interests and we have advertised open. If you want to invest in the education sector, 
I think you, you, we have opportunities there. If you want to invest in the medical sector, we have opportunities there. We have actually clearly identified, and I think people are reading from our website and our other material. If you want to invest in the transport sector, definitely you know that if you, if you have the capacity to put up an airport, Busia doesn't have an airport or an airstrip. Can you please come with your resources? Because actually that is, you know, Eastern Uganda doesn't have any airport also. And, so, and most people have to travel from Eastern Uganda to Kisumu to come to, to Kenya. And the people of Kakamega, Busia, and all that Western region also need to be coming to Busia to do business. Like the business for a time, they waste time going to Kisumu, wake up at around 4 to reach Kisumu at 7, then come. But why can't you just have an airport? There's an opportunity in the transport sector. There's a, uh, putting up an airport, the rail system and all those things. And for, the bene for your own benefit and for the benefit of the people and in many other sectors. The, the, the conference is next week. It's next week on the 18th. What is the response of the people you expect to come? The response has been very good. You know, this is a new concept in Kenya. You know, I think we're almost the second or third county that's doing it. The response is good. But we are not targeting only the international uh, fraternity. We also have people, local people, who can invest, but they do not know. So uh, it is a kind of awareness kind of conference, and also making people understand exactly. But we have those investors who understand. And we have had confirmations, I think, from the international community. We have over 130 people who have confirmed that they are coming. The local uh, investors are overwhelming. And people are excited about it, exactly. In fact, I know we are going to record, but we are not targeting, might be, that we were all investors. Like so far, in the county we have had, um, we have four active investors in the county now. So if we got another 20 to make 24, I think it would be a very good start. Is it, this uh, investment conference, it looks to me as if they're just feel good uh, exercise just like agricultural uh, shows just feel good to come and um, how do you assess the the, the 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 outcome of the conference it's so that it doesn't become a feel good situation yes it's not because you know this is uh, considering what we spend in the preparation maybe we'll spend maybe 30 million but you'll find an investor who comes with the two billion is that a loss one investor yeah. is it a loss do you have any a lot. Okay. Right now, as we are talking, I want investors who's putting... Would you want to mention them? I will mention them. Yeah, please. Yes, we have the Koreans who are putting up uh, the, multi, the, the, a, a the multi billion fertilizer factory. Yes, that the one only one of already. its kind. Yeah. Only one of its kind in Africa, <laughs> as everybody. And mm. we in Western Kenya have said that we accept it. There's another one again putting up two, putting sugar factories in Busia County so far. And one sugar factory has assured me it's almost into completion. It's going to give me 2,000 direct jobs and 40,000 direct jobs. The other one is going to give me around 1,000 direct jobs and quite a number of indirect jobs. Those are the two investors. We have the cassava factory, which is going to where people come in the generis so far. And like now, but like the, the, the potential was coming now. Let me talk about There's one I've talked to who wants to put up a multi billion hospital with all facilities, around two, over 2 billion, with all facilities. So we are only spending that million, but we are attracting. We have those who want to come up with big hotels, four-star, five-star hotels. So you'll find that it's, it's actually, it's actually just show, but it's also a kind of hunting for people to come and actually. Is setting up a sugar factory or two sugar factories in Busia a viable investment? I'm asking this because of the, in, the, the coming uh, uh, commercial uh, uh, sugar sugar from commercial countries, you know, which is cheaply produced than our production. Are you sure you're going to make up to construct a factory that will meet the challenges of commercial sugar? You know now, this is not my money. This is a private inspector. And I don't think Mtegi will put your money oh. where you're going to make losses, really. You leave a businessman, really. These are people, renowned business people. If you see somebody putting up a hotel, you know, you know the mentality we are now having that might be Busia is an important. These people know. You know, I, w I went to South Africa one time, a place called that city. It's a desert. But if you came and told Kenyan you can have a very wonderful hotel in a desert, we'll tell you, no, no, who people will go there? There are no people, but people have attracted people there. They make money. 
So these are investors, people who are using their own money, not my money, and they know they are going to make profit. Well, they are they guaranteed of getting cane? Because I know there's a definite, there definite. Many various factories fight for cane in, in Western Kenya. Is there any assurance that the, the investor will get cane to sustain his production I think throughout they have, the year? They have done studies and they have assured me the cane they, they will be getting will, be, will sustain their... Because they are putting in bill, millions of shillings. It's big farms. Normally, there are challenges with border counties, particularly in, ter in terms of uh, smuggling and uh, racketeering. How is Busia? We have lived along the border for some time. I think the issue can be addressed because it's a porous border. But it's also uh, the duty of the national government to police our borders. But we are working in partnership to ensure that we don't have counterfeit goods coming into Kenya. I think we are partnering with the, uh, the KRA, the Kenya Bureau of Standards, to ensure that we have mechanisms in place that so that in the future we don't have uh, things flowing from neighboring countries, inferior things coming back into Kenya. But it's not in that large scale as people think. It's just in a small scale. You have talked about um, agriculture. And you're talking about livestock. Yes. What kind of animals, uh, livestock, do you have in, in Busia? Is it, do, you, do you have a, Would you like another KMC at Busia? Do you have livestock that can sustain uh, some factories or manufacturing? We don't have... First of all, we, we still have the, the local livestock. If we start with the livestock, we might be good, go to the diary putting up diaries, which we've already started, because we have quite around two or three. But for having that one that can have a Kenya Meat Commission, it will take us time. But we want to go that direction. We want to go that direction. We want to improve sell of the local breeds and to come up with more uh, high-yielding animals. Why, 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 why are you still in the, with the, those animals? Is it because of disease, animal diseases? Yeah, it's you also because of the animal diseases. You say I'm tr we are trying to transit from the traditional way to the modern way. And we have not booked fast <coughs> because we, <coughs> we, we used to live in the comfort zone. But come, come to a realization you have to change fast. You'll find that people who have started putting up the hybrid animals are doing well quite now. With one cow, somebody can take his kids to school and uh, feed the family and run all the activities throughout the year. But you can have your 20 small animals, but they give very low yields. So we are now trying to activate our people through our officers. Zero grazing has been in this country for years. Yes. Why, is, why is it, uh, did it take time to catch up in Busia? Because we have big farms anyway. We believe we believed in taking our animals to the farms and all those things. We never believed in growing of Napier grass. But we are now co come to the realization that we are seeing the people who have changed. Even their lives have changed. So, this is something, you know, you cannot change over, so you cannot can go and tell to Rukana that mm. they start planting rapier grass, it will take time. <laughs> and uh, let's go back to politics. Uh, when we, we, counties were set up, a lot of county uh, representatives, MCAs, took trips to go to benchmark, the so-called benchmarking. Uh, what have your people been doing about benchmarking, the so-called benchmarking? Fortunately for my MCS, they have, been, they have not been extravagant. In fact, for us, for the first time we came in, what we went is we went for training sessions. In fact, we moved, went to Kisum. We had trainings for weeks. And to, to make everybody understand this role. So my people have rarely, and even if you looked at the list of people who are traveling out, uh, who are listed, uh, we are not listed among them. So what we have done is that we have tried to minimize. In fact, li like right now, we've come to an agreement that if we have to go and benchmark exactly, we will have exactly what are we going to achieve from this trip. And then when you come back, you come back with a report. So it's not just an easy, an easy thing. So, so far, we've not yet, as Pussy account, we have not been listed as those people who have been having. But it was, uh, it was unfortunate, personally, because you'll find that those trips actually 
somebody could take all the 74 county <laughs> assembly members to a country without any purpose at all. It's yeah. better to send two or three. Your MCAs did not clamor for that? When they, 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 they didn't. They didn't clamor for it that. It was very strange. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's the only one. Uh. Yeah. They didn't clamor even if you can ask the control of budget. Most of our spending was on trainings, and we trained them locally. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. Uh, I think um, I think that's all we can ask about uh, about uh, Busi County. And uh, unless, of course, you want to say more about uh, your conference. The conference? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Your investment conference. My, uh, <coughs> mine is uh, just an appeal. Tell us the date and... Uh, well, the uh, yeah. investment, Busia International Investment Conference will be held for us from 18th, next day next week to 20th. And uh, the chief guest who have confirmed so far will be the former Prime Minister of the Republic of Kenya, uh, Raila Molodinga. So he'll be there to open the forum and, to, and to grace the occasion. So what we are appealing to people, the willing investors, that we have so many opportunities in Busia County, in the education sector, we have, we want to put up universities, if you can do so. We want to put up academies. We, have no, we don't have an academy in Busia County, like an Aga Khan Academy and all those things. If you can come and put up one, we have well-to-do people there who can take their children to school. So you never make a loss there. Those are some of the things we can do as a government do, but you can do them. Come with the mod model ECD classrooms. We can partner. We but can ECD is a, the, the, the function of the county. It's a function of the county, but individual. You know, like me, you, like me, you don't you expect uh, my child to go to might be a public ECD school no, or... Uh, I don't expect... If, if I can afford. And therefore expect for you if, if me and Muteki can... So if I can, an investor comes, you come with actually a model academy. Because in other countries like China, you know an ECD is yes, you can have a school which is an ECD alone. If you can come with those models, not so that having one classroom in a primary school, that's an ECD. You can have a campus of an uh, ECDs alone. If you can come with those models in every sub-county, as a county, we can give you so many incentives. In the health sector, we have so many incentives. So many, you can come with your equipment, list to us, put up modern, a modern referral hospital, where even the presidents from outside can come and relax. We have land, we have plenty of land there. We have acres we can give them for free. If you can do a dry pot, we can always negotiate with you and give you opportunities. If you can come up with cottage industries, we grow so many crops, potatoes, tomatoes, the cotton. You can come with the generis, with plenty of cotton there, and so many other things. So what we are saying that in every sector, we have plenty of opportunities. We need the railway structures there. We need modern roads. If you can come on uh, annuity uh, agreements, we can go into annual agreements, do for us the tarmac roads, then we shall be partner with the county. We shall be repaying you on an annual basis. And... Um, Trade, we have so many opportunities for trade. Putting up malls. You know, we are still going into small shops. You have no malls in Busia? We, we have small ones, small, they call them supermarkets, but yeah. mini supermarkets. You so don't, we you want don't have, you don't have Napmat there? Or Chumi? It's, it's not yet reached there. It's, it's still in Kisumu. <laughs> it is yet reached there. But we want those people to come because we have plenty of land and opportunities because people from Kampala come to shop. Instead of coming to, to, Kamp to Nairobi, they can be shopping from. From Busia. From Busia. And you know from Busia to Kampala is one and a half hours. These guys have to travel here for two days. So you, 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 there's so many opportunities. Thank you very much, Bona Governor. Uh, <laughs> I hope people will attend your <laughs> investment conference uh, next week. Thank you. <laughs> and with that, uh, this is the end of the interview, and uh, we go back to the music. <laughs>